Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Dr. Asi, and today's topic is PSC 1010 module four and a review of uh, review for the exam for coming up final exam, which is so uh, in the module four we have um, we have four chapters, which are chapter thirteen, meiosis and life cycles, chapter fourteen, Mendelian genetics. Chapter 15, chromosomal basis, and chapter 17, which is gene expression from gene to protein. So let's get started. Um, I'm also gonna share my screen as you, you might be, you must be seeing my screen here. Okay, we start with chapter 13, which is meiosis and life cycles. As you 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 know by now, this is a pretty short chapter, um, but together with all other uh, three chapters, they are all genetics chapters. This is meiosis and life cycles. So when you're studying meiosis and life cycles, uh, so make sure you know the 10 steps of meiosis, which are basically really two mitosis back to back. Uh, so, and there are other vocabulary here, including heredity, variation, genetics, gene, asexual reproduction, clone, sexual reproduction, life cycle, somatic cell, karyotype, karyotyping, homologous, gamete, haploid cell, fertilization, gametophyte, myosis 1 and myosis 2. So, remember what we learned in previous chapter, there is a so meiosis is also part of a, a, a larger big a cycle, which is basically, as you know, meiosis is, is one of the two processes together with fertilization. Um, in a typical life cycle, we have two parts, gametophyte, which is haploid 1N and dip, uh, sporophyte diploid 2N. And then it's actually meiosis, meiosis actually uh, transfers sporophyte um, into into the gametophyte fertilization um, again reunites the gametes and make them diploid sporophyte which is also called alternation of generations so um, again um, make sure you study each of these 10 steps make sure that you can actually you know what meiosis is what each of these phases are interphase meta Prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one, prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, telophase two, cytokinesis. And always remember, meiosis produces four unique um, daughter cells, um, unlike mitosis. And also, meiosis half the chromosome number. So, meiosis is so, so important. And we will be keep seeing meiosis again in, in the following chapters as well. Okay, so that's uh, chapter four, uh, chapter thirteen. Chapter fourteen is basic Mendelian genetics. Probably in this module, this is the chapter that um, it's good idea to spend more time. Chapter fourteen, Mendel. Um, it's called Mendelian genetics because uh, Gregor Mendel, he's today considered father of genetics. He's experiment in eighteen sixty five and his two publications and his three laws. Now we know uh, uh, laws of in, in, in inheritance or genetics that we use today. That, that's why it's called Mendelian genetics. Um, so there are a, it's a good idea to start with vocabulary um, uh, in, in genetics. What is a gene, allele, character, hybridization, monohybrid, dihybrid, polygenic, QTL, Generation one, parental generation, F1, F2, F3, test cross, incomplete dominance, co-dominance, recessive dominance, um, recessive or dominant phenotypes, um, pistosis, multiple alleles, and goes on like that. And of course, Punnett square, which helps us to actually solve genetic problems, especially in if, when they get dihybrid or more than dihybrid. Um, so a good example always is um, eye color. So eye color gene, even though it's today, it's believed it's a polygenic, 
but still a brown eye color. If you give uh, eye color gene a letter B, brown eye will be big B and blue eye will be little B, right? So just an example. Um, and heterozygous will be big B, little B, because brown is dominant in this case, both big B, big B, and big B, little B will be brown. Only to, the only way to get blue eye is to have two um, two homozygous recessive little B, little B, um, in the individual. Um, recessive is actually a sometimes it's preferred a phenotype for many reasons, including uh, rare genetic disorders, which is basically recessive means. A lot of time it skip generations. Um, and also um, if the person has a heterozygous, uh, like just one copy, then actually it will be more likely a carrier, but it 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 will not show the the uh, the rare disorder, which is also a, again a called carrier or heterozygous. So um phenotype is physical appearance of a uh, basically an organism which is made of uh, genotype which are the genes and um environment which we did we don't cover too much environment in this chapter because it's all about genetics but environment could be important and make an impact especially for polygenes and remember polygene means uh, well monohybrid means just one gene which is three to one ratio dihybrid means two genes which is nine three three one ratio and polygenic, um, the ratio could be 27, 9, 9, 9, 3, 3, 3, 1, 1. But you don't need to memorize it. There are 64 uh, potential uh, offsprings. But basically, when it's polygenic, environment more likely have bigger effect as well. The good examples are cancer, uh, cancer, heart disease, diabetes. So all uh, polygenic traits. Polygenic means one trait impacted by or coded by many genes, multiple genes. Okay, so don't mix up multiple gene with multiple allele. So make sure you spend some time in chapter 14 um, and study, really learn about the Mendel and vocabulary and basic genetic problems before you move to next chapter. Um, again, in next chapter in our book, Campbell Biology, which is chapter 15, which is chromosomal basis and chromosomal theory. Um, in this chapter, we have Dr. Thomas Morgan and fruit flies as his um, uh, his um, model organisms. We have a lot of vocabulary here too. This is a continuation of genetics chapters, uh, which basically is cytology, trisophila, patterns, chromosomes, Dr. Morgan, um, chromosomal theory, X-linked genes, very, very, very important. Y-linked, wild type, mutant, recombinant, and how to calculate recombinant percentage. Um, so one, uh, okay, I want to say something about X-linked genes. X-linked genes are unique um, for uh, more than one reason, but one reason is, um, especially for men, they... Uh, they have just one X chromosome in human. In this case, basically, if there is a gene in their X chromosome and if they receive, uh, they might more likely they express it since they only have one X chromosome versus uh, uh, the females have actually two X chromosomes. Even if they receive one copy of a specific gene, they still have another X chromosome, then um, they're less likely. And so they will express that gene, which can be a huge advantage in this case. So X-link means anything on X chromosome, any genes on X chromosome. Um, y chromosome also important because that's a unique chromosome only found in male, in human. Um, basically, uh, the man, uh, the male determines the, uh, the, determines the, of, uh, the sex of the offsprings in the, in the male, in, this, uh, in the human, in this case. So you see one, uh, chromosomal map here in this picture, and you see different genes of uh, various fruit flies, as you see here, red eye color, white eye color, or some other uh, body shape or wing shape, um, as you see in their names, 
like yellow body, white eye color, um, miniature wing or rudimentary wing. Now, uh, this is a typical genetic map and, and basically in this map, uh, we actually we can calculate fre uh, recombinant frequencies and we can actually uh, locate each of these genes that we are studying into this uh, specific map. Okay, and this is called linkage map and this is because every gene on this chromosome link to each other. And always remember if the genes link to each other and if that means they are on the same chromosome, but also it means they don't follow Mendelian genetics. Chromosome seven, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 17 is about gene expression. And um, so chapter 17, I'm gonna open up something from our PowerPoints, which is basically, uh, as you know, we just covered uh, in the last class, which was about more about gene, gene expression, uh, replication, um, transcription, and translation. So make sure you look at this last chapter. Um, I'm going to share something just in a second. Uh, hold on. So, okay. So if you, um, so you can read this from your slides. Also, you can, um, you can look at our PowerPoint on this uh, specific chapter 17. So I'm sharing now our PowerPoints, and then I'm going to point something at the very last PowerPoint, which is basically uh, uh, this PowerPoint here, you see, which is showing uh, gene expression and basically from transcription, from DNA, you can see here a big bubble, which is RNA polymerase enzyme, which is basically finds a promoter here and binds to the promoter, gets help from transcription factors and start reading and transcribing DNA to the mRNA, you can see here. An mRNA processed with poly A and um, five prime end, and then basically five prime cap, and then leaves nucleus, goes to the, uh, finds a ribosome, and then get helps from these, what is what is called transfer RNA, tRNAs, they have, which have anticodons and they connect amino acids uh, uh, to the codons and basically then they actually spit out you can see specific amino acids by reading the um, mRNA and then they become protein eventually. So this is really the summary of um, chapter 17. Um, there are specific details on each, each of these uh, steps so that you should be studying paying attention how RNA splicing works, how alteration of mRNA ends, um, transcription, and then um, basically which direction this transcription going, what is RNA polymerase, what is promoter, what is transcription factors. And so um, this is chapter 17. Um, in next class, we will also go over a little more on this and then do a review of all these four chapters. So just to recap, um, basically uh, this is module four in your um, in your book, Campbell Biology. So you have access to the ebook, e textbook. Basically, you should be reading on these uh, these four chapters: chapter thirteen, meiosis; chapter fourteen, Mendelian genetics; chapter fifteen, chromosomal theory; and chapter seventeen, gene expression. So. Thanks for watching, and please feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. Um, see you in the next uh, next video, and happy studying.